Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, Beauty on a Budget. My name is Heather. Now in yesterday's video, I kind of went through about some of my calendars and stuff, why I use so many, how I keep myself organized. Another thing is, is to keep organized is budgeting. Now I have a really good budgeting list that I actually do use. I couldn't find my, um, my book that has it in. Um, Right now I'm in the middle of trying to get all of my stuff ready for to do my day home taxes. So that's with some other stuff and I just can't find it. So I just went and I quickly printed off a very basic uh, budgeting list. So it's got all these different little groupings. So one is your income. So well, it says after tax income, side hustle income, investment income. And I can say I have like not much of any of that stuff. And then it has your savings and investments, so asking for your retirement accounts, investments, cash savings, and I will say I have none of that. Uh, me personally, my husband, he was, he's got some of that stuff set up for our retirement and everything, but we don't touch it. Uh, he deals with that. Any reinvestments, my husband deals with that. I don't know what's in the savings stuff. I don't know. Um, just know my husband takes care of all that. <laughs> Uh, same with like I just do my day home so I just have a very minimal um, uh, income um, so a lot of the stuff on here I don't even pay my husband's got the you know better income we don't actually this is one thing is um, so I'm on my second marriage I'll say my first marriage me and my ex-husband we didn't talk about finances we didn't save anything we live paycheck to paycheck, barely being able to pay rent and buying groceries. With little kids around, it was not a very good setup. Uh, so I learned a lot in the first marriage. I know we had gone to debt and we actually went to a debt consolidation place to help us get out of debt. And the lady just looked at us within five or so minutes in her office and she's like, I'm sorry, I can't help you. You don't have enough income and your debt is just too high and like we didn't have anything we didn't have internet well at that time there was not much internet we didn't have internet we didn't have cable we each had a cell phone uh, I don't think we had a home phone at that time either um, we didn't drive so there was no vehicle we owned nothing of assets we rented so we had absolutely nothing uh, all the money we had coming in all went to pay for bills and groceries and rent and a few little things here and there but we you know cut out so like remember I do have the full book that she gave us I have it somewhere about you know budgeting and how to cut back on expenses and what are where's people spend their money that you don't even think about and we went through the whole checklist and it was like zero 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 and all these columns like we don't do a lot of this we don't do anything so here we are in debt and we've got nothing to cut so taking that what I've learned from that to this one so my first marriage you know what it was really bad for it was I had a good credit score I had a credit card that I kept down to like a bare minimum balance of always under 50 bucks I paid it off if I used it I would immediately pay it off within that well before the 30 days uh, I had a home you know, I had my bank account and then comes my ex-husband and we got engaged and then we supposed to do a joint account well I didn't know what they did I didn't know the bank still did this where it doesn't matter if it was your account or his account the guy automatically gets the count so all my hard work that I had done in my early 20s to build myself up all went to him and then when we got divorced uh, I looked like I didn't pay rent it looked like I didn't have anything because there was no bills were in my name so I was like really bad set up there so with my second marriage um, none of our finances mix I have my money coming in I pay the bare minimum basic bills my husband has the bigger income so he pays all the bigger expenses so you might say like husband and wives you really have to like if you really want to get a good budget and start saving money like this year i really want to start saving money i say that every year so i want to start saving money I'm trying to figure out well how do i save the money where do i spend my money 
only to realize that every time I do put money aside, I end up having to spend it because an unexpected something comes up, which is what the savings is for, is to help cover that. So well, without that, we, uh, you know, there'd be times where I said, well, without that little buffer of around $1,000 at the end of the year or sometime within the year, I get that extra $1,000 in my account. Um, without that, I would have, you know, no safety net. So I do really like these budgeting lists and so it's really important husband and wife really sit down and work on these together. Like I said, so me and my husband, we don't, we don't share expenses. You know, he's got his bank account set up. I've got my banking stuff set up. I've got my job. He's got his job. Basically, so if I go through this, like it has all your different expenses. So it's got your home expenses. So your mortgage, your rent, property taxes, home insurance, home repairs, and utilities. I will say, way we, way we're sitting right now, we don't have a mortgage. Uh, we're mortgage free, but all these property taxes, the home insurance, any home repairs, and all the uh, major utilities, my husband pays all that. The only thing for utilities that I pay for is for me and my two kids' cell phones, which works out to about two hundred and eighty dollars a month. And then the next group is your food. So it's asking for your groceries and then it's asking for your restaurants and eating out. Now I know I spend a, probably about an easy, I can say $500 a month on groceries. It can be more, it probably is a little more, but I'm saying I can just say a flat 500 is what I know I probably spend in any general month on groceries. And then for this restaurant eating out, I put a question mark because that one is tricky because it's, we don't eat out often. Um, I think this last, you know, just the last couple of weeks ago, we had like Christmas, so my kids were home. Me and my daughter, we were doing Christmas shopping, or my son, we'd be at the mall doing Christmas shopping. Uh, so we would stop at the food court and grab some little thing. Like I know me and my daughter, we would go to the little sushi place and we'd buy a small pack of sushi and split it. So under ten dollars for the two of us to eat at the food court. So we found ways to like eating out to be pretty cheap, or you just stop in, you know, like the. Uh, McDonald's has their their cheap menu so we usually get the junior chicken so two junior chickens is just a little over six dollars you know we don't buy you know we don't eat out at major restaurants that's uh, something we do just a couple times a year um, and the next one is health and medical so health insurance well where we live in the province we're in we don't have that I know certain uh, provinces and territories each have their own regulations on health insurance so our province we don't pay it we've got the basic Alberta health care you can purchase Blue Cross or any of the other stuff for on top of that but we I find that the basic Alberta health care is good enough for us so then it uh, talks about the other expenses so your doctor dentist well they don't have it on here but the autometrist prescriptions life insurance and fitness like your gym yoga etc so I would say we don't have to pay for the doctors uh, the dentist would be, you know, I don't know, that would be as needed. We, I, when my kids were little, when there was better coverage, certain times there was bit better coverage, I could take my kids in once a year and get their dental checkups and any minor stuff. But it's been quite a few years since I've had my own dental work done because I just don't have the money for it. The other one that's not on here is, I said, the optometrist. Now, right now, my kids, their eye exams with our health plan, um, their eye exams are free. So up until the age of 20, I think they raised it to, I'm not quite sure, 19 or 20. So until the kids turn that age, it's once a year, their eye exams are free. For me, it's $125 for my eye exam. So I wrote that down so I know how much my eye exams are. And then for my the glasses for my kids, their complete glasses where we go, it's around 300 so my kids can each get a pair of gl uh, glasses for around 300 So these are expenses that I know come up about once a year that I kind of budget and plan for. And this would be why I could save $1,000 and then January comes and then is wiped out because that's, you know, four kids, you know, buying glasses and stuff. So um, prescriptions, I just wrote as needed. Um, I'm trying to think, I think in the last four years, I think I've only had to fill... I think three prescriptions, one for me and then one for each, of, one for two of my kids. So in four years, three prescriptions. So again, that's just as needed. Life insurance, we don't have. 
uh, fitness, your gym, yoga, stuff like that, we don't do. Uh, transportation, okay, so your, your car loan and payment. Again, I will say we have no car payment. Our car is nine and a half years old. It's bought and paid for a long time ago. So there's no car payments. Car insurance, my car insurance is, this is another one where I save throughout the year because I know it comes. Uh, mine's around 1600 for the year. And it's due like July, August. So that I always plan for. Uh, my gas, I right now I figured I'm spending probably about $50 a week on car gas. Now $50 a week is just saying, well, sometimes I fill up once a week, sometimes I have to fill twice a week. It just depends on how much driving I do. But it just kind of gives me an idea of, you know, how much car gas do I spend. Um, next one, okay, car repairs and maintenance. Well, major car repairs, my husband will deal with that. We just took our car in. Uh, <laughs> December 26th, so Boxing Day. I was out doing Boxing Day, day Christmas shopping with my kids and 8.30 at night I'm driving and my whole dashboard just stops lighting up. It just went dead. It just, that scared me. Didn't know what it was. I get my son, we, get, we drive home in complete darkness on the whole dashboard. Um, took it in, so I was without my car for two, three days I think it was. I think it was about three days without my car just because I took it in the day before they could see it. Plus there was the whole day they saw it and then I went the next morning and picked it up. So it was like three days without my car. I said at least it was during the Christmas break so my kids, you know, they didn't really have to go anywhere. But you know, that was over, it was almost $450 and it turned out my battery had died. But my morning light for my battery didn't click in. It just all just shut off. Now it probably did click in. But it probably kicked in and then the whole thing just went off. So that was just an unexpected, so that was a bigger car deal. So my husband paid that one. So as for the general maintenance for the vehicle, so I take care of all the oil change, uh, filter, cabin air thing, the rear differential, the front, whatever that one's called. All those basic ones, I take care of all the major stuff my husband takes care of. Last January, it was my transmission. We need a new transmission, so I'm on my third transmission in this vehicle. That's a very another long, long story on that one. But and then, of course, it asks for public transportation, which we don't have to purchase um, where we live. Uh, see my kids because I can. We we're close enough to the school, so they walk to school, or I can drive them if needed to. They don't need a bus pass. Um, others, I say something about others, and they say parking, tolls, etc. I don't pay to park anywhere. Um, I will, don't have tolls, nothing like that. Now, what I do for parking is I keep a change in the car just for if I'm ever downtown and I have to pay the meter to park somewhere for a little bit, like run to the bank or run to the library or something like that, or picking up my husband sometimes. I'll have to put, oh, excuse me, some change in the meter. So I keep change in the car for that. Okay, and then it's talking about your debt payments. So credit card payments, student loans or other loans. Well, I do have a one store or no two. I do have two store credit card things which I use, but not not really. I like to have them just because I don't. I like to have them for emergencies where I can go in and purchase something if I, if I just need something and I don't have any money and then I'll pay it back. I'm always one of those ones who. I try hard not to spend on the credit card unless I need to and then I always go in and pay the credit card before I try sometimes I'll try to do it before the bill comes sometimes it's just after the bill comes but I try to not have like I said like carrying like $50 or something on a credit card it seems to be like you know you want to pay that off but you also want to have a balance on there so it's one of those tricky things because you want to look like you're using it and paying it off to keep your rating going, to keep your credit score higher. But having it, having your credit cards maxed out and not paying anything or just paying the minimum doesn't help either. So I always try to keep my credit cards, you know, very low, like $10 to $50 is what I'll put on it. Just so I can use it every couple months because I've had so many credit cards where they've just taken away from me because I hadn't used them. And that actually puts a negative impact on your credit score. I thought I was doing good by, you know, having credit cards and being responsible and 
and not having a balance owing and instead it's actually hurting me for not using them. Uh, student loans. Well, I had a student loan. I'm happy to say I finally paid my student loan off. So that was good. It wasn't a very big student loan, but just with things that had happened, um, it did have to go sit in collections for, I think it sat in collections for about 15 years. And I finally got it all paid off. Uh, so that was good. Other loans, you know, I don't have any other loans. Uh, family expenses. So they have education, daycare, babysitting, school supplies, books. Now for this education, school supplies and books, I kind of say, well, those would be in, in August is when I'd have to pay that stuff for my kids going to school. And I just wrote, oh, it varies year by year based on the number of kids I have going to school. Uh, obviously, when I have four kids going to school, it's going to it cost me more for their schooling. Now, starting in September, for the next couple of years, I've only got one going into school. So that's going to be a big uh, change right there. But I will say my kids' school fees are not that bad. Uh, their textbook rentals, they're not like they used to be. Uh, school fees are just like a flat fee. I forget what it is. Um, but I could look that up. I know my kids are in band, so the band fee was $100 each for band. Uh, my daughter was taking ceramics, so her ceramics class was $35 for the options. Um, so it's just like I said, there's very things that vary. And then school supplies. I will say when my kids were in elementary, I think I spent more money in school supplies when they were in elementary than any other time. You would think it would cost more as they got older, but actually they use actually less supplies and they can take care of their supplies better. So, I mean, I would buy them a pair of scissors. And, okay, now this pair of scissors has to last about two years if possible. I do know that, you know, stuff does break. You know, you're using them scissors or, you know, every day. But, you know, I tell, tell the kids, you know, try to make these last as long as possible. Crayons, pencil crayons, markers, uh, pens, if they last the year, that's fine. You know, if that's stuff. try to make them last the whole year. You know, there was years where it was like really tricky to even come up with the money when I had my two kids in school. And I was, you know, a single mom with four kids and I had two in school and just coming up with just trying to buy the basics. So they needed a box of crayons each, a box of pencil crayons, pencil crayons, a box of markers and so many duotangs. I know when they were elementary, it seems like they, they needed like 50 duotangs each and it was just really hard. Now the number of pencils was pretty easy to get them up for the pencils. But they needed like 50 pencils each. And it was again, it was like, well, that's, you know, like a box of pencils is 10. So I got to buy you five packs of pencils. Then I realized, you know, whatever pencils they didn't use, I could just set aside and save for the next school year, which is what I started doing. And then when the school supplies would come on sale, I would buy an extra box and I would start to build up my supplies. And to the point now where I haven't had to purchase crayons or pencil crayons for probably like six years now even for my day home I'm doing my day home 10 years I've never had to purchase those things for my day home because I had purchased them so I had stocked up same with loose leaf I've got stacks of loose leaf paper when they were on sale or I uh, garage sales people give away loose leaf paper uh, same with binders um, I found ways to get you know binders good binders you know second hand Anything to help save money, because like buying a binder is like 20 bucks a binder. Well, if you have four kids and each need three binders, you're going to go and buy that many binders at 20 bucks? I'm sorry, there's like not going to happen some years. So, you know, there's just ways to get around some of that stuff. And then there's this section here, and this is the entertainment. And I have most of these with zeros, because one is electronics. We don't do, we've got some old video game systems. My kids play. We have the original Xbox, the Xbox 360 Connects, uh, PS1, PS2, PS3, and I think that's it. So we have like all these older systems that, you know, except the PS2 we've had for 20, almost 22 years now. Still play. I still play it. It's my, it's my system. <laughs> so, and then hobbies. I don't really have any. I my, uh, my kids, they they're in band, so they, they've got their instruments. We rent them through the school. Um, my kids like to read, so we have, you know, a library. Um, holidays, we don't do holidays. Uh, 
me and my husband, we don't travel. That was one of our things. I said, um, me and my husband, when we first started dating, he asked me, he's like, what's important to you? A uh, home or travel? I'm like owning a home or traveling. And I'm like owning a home, raising my family. Um, cause I said, I always figured out that I could travel when I'm in my fifties. Um, by that point I said, my, that point, my kids should, you know, be in their twenties. Like I'd figured out how old I'd be when my kids were all in their twenties. And I figure so by the time I'm in my fifties, my kids are in their twenties. Um, they could pay their own way and I could pay my way. So we could do family vacations when they're older and able to appreciate that so and subscriptions i we don't do any of that there is we don't have netflix we have basic um internet we don't have cable we have basic internet so with that we can get enough stuff that we like um other fun money i put a question mark because that one here is interesting the way they have it other fun money i don't know that would just be the extra things that when you have a few extra bucks here and there you kind of do something fun with the family I don't know, I just put a question mark because I have no idea how much I would spend on that stuff. It would depend on how much cash I have on me. If we went to the mall, it's like, well, how much cash do I have on me today? Can I give my kids like some, like, I never did allowance with my kids. They had chores, but they never got an allowance. Uh, we would go to the mall, you know, like, uh, so we would do when my kids were little, be Saturday morning was chores, and then Saturday after lunch, we would go to the mall or I'd go get groceries or something. And so they would get... Uh, a treat at the mall for you know for being good and so I never never did that um, allowance thing I thought it was important for kids to know about chores but I didn't think they had to get paid to do it I thought it was important that they learn to do things and not feel that they have to be rewarded for it uh, next category here they have personal care so it's beauty and then clothing Again, I put question marks beside both of those because I don't know. Um, I don't spend a lot of money on clothing. Um, most of my stuff, if you've seen some of my um, thrift hauls, you see that I buy my clothes at the secondhand stores. I'm not ashamed of that. Um, there was a time when, you know, like that would be like anybody who shops secondhand or had to get, you know, secondhand clothes or passed down from cousins or family members. Well, then you're the poorer people. And it was more... I don't know, just something different when I was growing up versus now when my kids are growing up. And it seems acceptable that everybody thrifts. And it's just acceptable that, you know, hand-me-downs is just part of way of life. Um, but then this beauty one, again, it's a, it's hard to know how much you spend. Well, uh, I try to, you know, buy stuff on sale, buy in larger quantities, buy like toothpaste in packs of like three or four. I'll buy toothbrushes in the larger packs as we have a large family, stuff like that. So it's, I don't really know how much I actually spend right now on that stuff. I can figure it out. Uh, the next one they have is pet care. So they have pet food, pet insurance, grooming, and veterinary. Now one thing they didn't have on this that I, that I wrote in was the dog license. So we have our dog and our license for which right now it's just under $40 for the year. So I had to write that down. Uh, pet food, I figure out that it's, um, I spend, like, because I buy uh, pet food, um, I wrote 20, 20 to $25 a bag for the cat food or dog food, so I'm just saying, okay, so it's $25, um, every, about six weeks, I'll go in and I buy two bags of each, so, so I pay about $100 on pet food every six weeks. Now, that's approximately, sometimes I don't, sometimes I you know, it just depends on, I guess, how much the pets eat their food, how fast they eat it, if they like that kind, don't like that kind. Um, if we have other treats that we buy instead of just the dry pet food. Um, pet insurance, again, we don't do. Grooming, we don't do. Uh, veterinarian, I just wrote as needed. It's been so many years since we've had to take any of our pets into the vet. Very thankful for that. And then the last category is miscellaneous. So they've got gifts, donations, and other. Well, I guess the gifts would be like Christmas and birthday presents, which I don't even know what I spend on that because I choose things. I spend that stuff a little bit every month um, throughout the year. Like you always know, my kid, I have four kids. So I used to buy, you know, throughout the year, I'd buy stuff for 
Christmas and birthdays kind of at the same time. Like, you know, like, oh, this they like this for Christmas or maybe their birthday. And I can set it aside and then when their birthdays would come before Christmas, then I can kind of went through the stuff, that the stash I had built up throughout that year. And sometimes I'll buy stuff from the year before that I never got a chance to give, you know, give to them. I kind of go through that. Family members for, you know, don't really do a lot. Um, I think for birthday gifts for other family members, I do for my mom, my sister, and my brother. And I will say the gifts that I spend are under $20. Same with Christmas. I try to keep the Christmas gifts for family members, you know, around that $20, $25. And I know how many people we have to buy for. So you can kind of budget that way throughout the year. And then the other one that says like donations or others. Well, we have a World Vision. We sponsor one little girl. And so I just have $50 a month for that. So that is just the basic overview of, uh, of budgeting, which I said it's really important that, you know, like I said, I, you know, for husband and wives to really sit down and do this. And it's really, really important to know your after tax income. That is a big one because I have so many people who I know who are on a salary wage and they say they make X amount a year. But then they spend it like as if they make that much and it's well how much do you have coming in every month and they couldn't tell you they live paycheck to paycheck and they're in debt but they do all this stuff and then they look at somebody like me and my husband and they're like well we're not in debt are we we own our house outright we own the vehicle outright we you know we have yes we don't travel we don't do you know we don't do a lot of things we must we don't we don't smoke we don't drink so, uh, so I said, there's just things we don't do. So we're able to save money by not doing those things. We don't eat out at restaurants. If we do eat out, we go to the cheaper places. Uh, we use coupons. Or uh, we don't buy the drink there. Like, you know, we'll take the kids to, like, um, the food court. And they'll each get something to eat, like a burger or something. And then we'll stop in on the way home. We'll stop somewhere for something cheaper to drink. Like, uh, if we stop in at... 7-Eleven or Circle K or even Tim Hortons for a hot chocolate is cheaper than buying like a drink at the mall. So it's just finding ways to keep the expenses down. So I think I'm just scanning through this list. I think I've now gone over everything on this checklist. There might be things missing. Like I said, there was things that weren't on here that I do spend on. So I had to write fill in. But it's just a really good quick view of expenses and how much you have coming in and how much you have going out and so but again you know it's just husbands and wives really have to really talk to each other get your budgets figured out um it's pretty easy to do once you start doing it like I know when I first moved out I was 20 I was about 20 almost 20 yeah, I was 20 I think it was like 19. No, I was 20 because I moved out in March. My birthday was October. So I just turned 20 when I moved out. And so I never had to pay bills. I didn't, I mean, I always saw my mom do it, but that was the first time I had to do it. And then I sat down and I did, made myself a budget because I know I only had, I was working at McDonald's. I was making about just a little, I was making around $6 an hour, like six something an hour. So I didn't have, you know, not a lot of money coming in. I knew how much my mortgage was, um, thanks to the help of my mom, she was able to help me, you know, come with a down payment and help me buy a house. So I had my house, uh, but then I had my utilities and they weren't expensive, they weren't bad, but I had it all listed. So I knew I had sat down, said, okay, so here's my paycheck and I wrote down my paycheck and to the exact penny and I said, okay, out of this my mortgage is this amount okay and then I went through the utilities and I'd have all my bills laid out in front of me and I'm like okay this bill is this amount this one's this amount this one's this amount this then I went through and I said okay when are these due so then I went through when my bills were due and that's when I noticed that um my bills were not all due on the exact same day that there was some my the bills would come in but you have a couple weeks to pay it and so I started looking at this and saying, okay, well, I get paid twice a month. My mortgage that I had set up was bi-weekly, so I paid it twice a month. Um, there was a condo fee, which I will say at that time, my mom was covering for me. Uh, there was uh, some something else. Um, was, there was another fee that my mom was covering. I think it was the property taxes, I believe. Um, my mom was paying that for me too, just to help me get into 
that and then I was supposed to take over those as I was able to um but so then I wrote down the bills and how much they were and when they were due and what day they came in. And so I started looking at this and I'm like, okay, well, I know the bills are due. So I, uh, my bills were probably about really close to the same amount every month. I, I only just me and a cat. So, you know, it's not like, and I was, I went, and I was at work five days a week. So, uh, so I even found ways to like, you know, for my cell phone at the time, like going back to 19, um, 1999. Maybe 1990, 1998, 1999, somewhere in there, I had a cell phone. So I can say that going back that far, I had, you know, like just, must have been 99, I got my cell phone. So it was just, you know, like being like, that point having a cell phone, and then it was, I know what I paid, and my phone bill was, my cell phone was just under $50 a month, so I didn't need a home phone, because I figured I got my cell phone. Uh, at that time, you had your plans, and so I mostly worked Monday to Friday, 11 to 7. So I had my plan set up, because you have different ways of starting your phone plan, like what what time do you want to have your calls free before and after? So I found, well, I worked the 11 to 7, so my daytime charge calls cost the most from 8 a.m. until 7 p.m. So I figure, well, I'm not making too many calls between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. Most of my calls will be after 7 p.m. So I had my phone plan set up so I could make all my calls after 7 p.m. and they would be free. No extra charges. You know, I don't know. There's just been so many different phone plans since then. It's really hard because I can tell you about every different phone plan I've ever had. But that one I do remember. And then... Like I said, like just my utilities were between twenty and sixty dollars a month for every, you know, between all those for the different utilities I had to pay, and it was just you know setting it up and figuring out a budget and then buying groceries for myself and you know just realize you know a single person doesn't eat a lot. That's when I started really budgeting and really you know meal planning was became a big thing. And then you know you get you know and. You, married you have kids and then budgeting and meal planning becomes even more important but it's really I said really important because I said I tried to do the budgeting with my ex-husband but it's hard when only one of you is doing everything and that's my doorbell I'll be right back yeah sorry about that so I said um, when one person is trying to set up the budget and trying to set up everything and the other person is not doing it it is so hard to really be honest about finances and to list everything and to stick to a budget if only one person is making it and discussing it. So it's as what I've just found out. That's why I said with my second husband, we have this great way of doing the expenses. It's, you know, we talk about it. Um, like I said, it really helps that he's kind of takes over all the major expenses. I just pay for the minor things and the things that need the kids need. Um, that works for us if I was making more money we'd have to do you know if we had to do it we'd have to have you know I guess if I was making equivalent money to what he was making so if I was out in the workforce like really working because I find right now my child care stuff is not like I don't feel like I'm I feel like I haven't worked in like 22 years even though I'm at home raising my kids I'm re helping raise other people's kids but I don't feel like I'm actually working. But if I was actually out working, making a paycheck, I would have to, you know, my husband, we'd have to change the way some of this stuff is because right now it's he pays a lot and I'm just paying the minimum stuff. But you know, it's just, I know how we would have to change things around. But it would be like, we'd have to set up a joint account to pay all the bills because I would have to put instant money in to help cover, which I do. Uh, when I've got extra money, I you know, put in to help pay for you know like unexpected bills sometimes, like the car and stuff. But I guess I'm just saying, I guess I'm just kind of rambling on, trying to think of what I wanted to say, and I kind of lost my train of thought when I went to the door. But I guess I will just end my video here by just saying thank you so much to everybody who subscribed to my channel and watching my videos, and I will see you all in my next videos. Bye.